Hi everyone, here's the book chemist once again, and Don DeLillo, revered as one of the most original writers in contemporary American fiction, one of the key authors in American postmodernism, possibly only second to Thomas Pynchon in that small canon, in the 21st century has been writing a long series of lyrical, philosophical, cryptic, strange short novels that are all very satisfying in their bizarre way. They said they, they, they scratch a certain intellectual itch that many readers have, but inevitably make you go once you're done. Ah. But what do you mean though, Don? Zero K, his latest novel Before the Silence, dealt with the possibility of extending life beyond the limits of human biology thanks to technology, and in many ways was just a tiny bit more interesting, more of a full-bodied novel, whatever that means. It had a bit more of a human side to it that reminded me of the those earlier works, his efforts like White Noise or um, uh, 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 Libra or uh, Underworld, of course, even Mao Chu and all his earlier novels, where, sure, characters are weird and behave bizarrely and dialogues are a bit off kilter and strange, but you kind of can relate up to a certain point to their human reaction and to the way they engage with events unfurling around them and to the strange scenarios where they're cast. What kind of a novel is The Silence, his latest book? Is it more one of those engaging, bizarre and disconcerting and sinister narratives that still maintained a high level of human interest, like the books he was writing in the 80s and 90s? Is it closer to the lyrical, crypting, inscrutable books he wrote in the 21st century? It's the latter. It's one of the uh, um, bizarre philosophical novels. They're all very confusing. The silence follows just a handful of characters, five characters really, as they live through a great, vast, unspeakable horror. Non-justified courier. And also the world is ending or something, it's not very clear. Planes are crashing, the power is out, people are in the streets. Um, it's all very messed up. Now, I think that the silence is a few things. And if nothing else, the fact that such a, a short, in many ways minimalistic novel can be so many things is, and I'm not joking here, I'm being honest, quite impressive and the kind of trick that you would expect a writer of the little skills to be able to pull off. The Silence is a horror story. It's a very effective, incredibly sinister and creepy portrayal of the end of the world, the collapse of its civilization, the very first hours after everything goes to shit that will let you... I, I, I simply had to read it from page one to the last, well, number one, because it's very short and, and it invites that kind of reading, but also because it would have been very scary, especially in a year such as 2020, with all that's been happening, to let it sit in the back of your mind and allow yourself to reflect on the, on the implications of this situation, on the fact that nobody seems to be quite clear on what's going on, on the fact that workers in hospitals are clearly themselves shell-shocked as they offer first aid to the victims of the first accidents in this great collapse. You know that old tenant of horror fiction that often letting the reader imagine the horrors of the narrative is a very effective and very good way of saving yourself the effort of presenting uh, say a convincing scare but also making that scare so much more powerful. The silence definitely follows that suggestion and that tenet and it and delivers on it and it is by all means an impossibly creepy book. But the silence at the same time is also a hilarious book. In a way, I'm sorry to say, it reads a bit like satire of Don DeLillo. If I, I don't know, it feels like as if somebody wanted to have a laugh by making fun of the typical De Lillo novel. The end of the world and the collapse of civilization is represented by the fact that the, the Super Bowl transmission cuts off 
and that apparently is, you know, the, 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 the most impossible horror that could be depicted in American society. Once the television goes cold and there's no more transmission, the characters start reciting advertisement lines to themselves. Come on, how unsubtle even is that? After they survive a plane crash and they're being given medical treatment, two of the characters just retreat into a toilet to have sex? What? What kind of human reaction? Who does that? It's all very absurd. The third thing the silence is, and I think possibly that's what the novel, the text, intended itself to be read as, is a kind of absurdist, surreal semi-play. This, I could um, easily see it is uh, represented on a stage. Um, a surreal novel inspired by the works of, say, Samuel Beckett, some of Sartre, uh, plays um, a book that tries to cast characters into an obscure, uh, dark scenario to try and show how the darker sides maybe of the human psyche emerge in these situations, how humans react to these extreme conditions, what happens to them, to try and show us something very real and very deep about our human nature. Does it deliver on that front? I think that if it does, it's because you'll have to carry a lot of the efforts your, to, to, the, to the table yourself. Like with the other post-2000 Delillo novels, Cosmopolis, Point Omega, Zero K2, it feels like you are going to enjoy this very much. Not because you'll approach it the, the way you approach any other book and you're looking for a, a good story, uh, interesting characters, insight into a certain moment in history, the way people behave, the way people think. Not the, the usual things we read novels for, but some kind of intellectual backscratcher that's going to take care of that hitch I was talking about. Another way I can put this is that DeLillo is by now kind of a genre unto himself. Criticizing this novel because it doesn't have a very interesting plot doesn't make any sense to me. I would feel crass saying that. I would feel like I, I had completely missed the point of the book. But that also makes it difficult to criticize it because it doesn't deliver on the, on, the, on the basic things you expect from novels. I think it was never the novel's intention to deliver on that. I think this is its own thing. So how good a Delillo novel is The Silence? On a scale between 1 and 7 Delillos, I would give it a D. What did you think of The Silence? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Is it possible to like or dislike a book like this? Because I don't know. I, I really have no idea. I'm not sure if I liked it. I think. But then again, did I? I really look forward to talking about the book and about Delillo's more existential cryptic fiction in general in the comments section below. Actually, I'll answer that question. Yeah, I think I liked it. But did I do? It creeped me out, that I can tell you. It creeped me out. Thanks to, who is it? Picador. Thanks to Picador for my review copy of the novel. And thank you, as always, for watching the video. Thanks to my patrons, too, for supporting the YouTube channel on patreon.com. If you're interested in supporting the channel, why don't you visit that website? And I will see you in the next review. Bye, people. <music>